some people would say chemistry is the most important component for a healthy relationship. You just say the word chemistry and their face lights up, they get all excited. Other people would say, you know what? Relationships about commitment and faithfulness. Some of you just get nightmares about periodic tables and beakers when you say the word chemistry. So what is chemistry? Is it necessary for a great relationship? That and more are what we're gonna answer today on Relation Shots. Welcome to Relation Shots. My name's Eric Wooten, and if this is your first time stopping by, we are so glad you're here. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. Today, we're gonna address this thing called chemistry and whether or not it's essential for a great, healthy relationship. You know, for years, we've been watching movies and soap operas and reading books by authors like Carolyn Brown and Nicholas Sparks. And you know, we're shown over and over again that romance and passion are the keys to a great relationship. We've seen it at once, we've seen it a hundred times. Couples eyes lock, butterflies happen, great feelings. They grab hands, look into each other's eyes, fall into bed together. And then normal couples like you and I look at that and we go, oh, I want that too. So Webster defines chemistry as a strong emotional attachment, attraction, or sympathy. I recently read a blog by a self-proclaimed expert in relational chemistry, and here's what they had to say in the blog. They said that chemistry is without question the most important thing in a relationship. They said you can work on all the other parts of a relationship, but you can't manufacture chemistry. Chemistry does not discriminate. Chemistry does not fade. Chemistry lays the foundation for the relationship. They ended the article by saying, do not settle for anything less than butterflies. So chemistry feels like this chemically driven, uncontrollable, insatiable desire for another person. And you know what? That sounds cute on the front end. And that may even make your ego feel good to think that there's somebody out there who just can't resist you. But I'm here to tell you today uh, that that is not a sustainable, healthy, relationally driven strategy to maintain a long relationship. Because when the chemistry goes, the commitment's gonna go with it. When the feelings go, I'm not gonna wanna be in the relationship anymore. So I wanna take a little bit different angle today and I wanna propose this thought, that a healthy, long-lasting relationship is not driven or built on a foundation of chemistry, but one of intentionality. Author and business leader Mark Sanborn says this, that success is not based on what we know, believe, or intend, but it's a result of what we consistently do. So that tells me you can have all the butterflies and feelings in the world, but if you don't have a consistent plan of intentional action in a relationship, your relationship is going nowhere. This whole idea of chemistry is what causes couples to buy into what I call the myth of spontaneity. And that's that everything good in your relationship should just happen organically and spontaneously. Communication, acts of affection, date nights, sex, all the stuff that we know is important for a relationship, we just believe should happen spontaneously. But I'm here to tell you that if it's important and it's not happening, it's, it's about intentionality. We've got to be intentional in our relationship to take our relationship to the next level. So what I wanna do is I wanna give you just three simple ideas on how to be more intentional in your relationship. And I promise you that with intentionality, chemistry and some of the feelings follow with it, and I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. So here's just three simple ideas of how you can be a little more intentional in your relationship starting this week. Number one is the idea of a staff meeting, and I've talked about this extensively in a previous video called Your Marriage is an Essential Business. You can go back and check that out. But you need a weekly check-in point with your spouse where you're talking about the business of the relationship. What's coming up the next week, kids with doctor's appointments, the budget talks, things we're working on. You know, a lot of times we spend all our time in the relationship talking about the business side and not having fun and enjoying the relationship. So a weekly staff meeting, being intentional at that time, will force some of those conversations to stay in the staff meeting and not come into the rest of the relationship. So that's number one is staff meetings. 
Number two is date nights. And I believe for every one staff meeting, you need two date nights. And I'm not talking about going out and doing something elaborate. I'm simply talking about setting aside 30 minutes, an hour, 15 minutes, whatever you might have to sit down with your spouse and just do something relational. This is not the time to talk business. That's the staff meeting. This is not the time to talk about the kids. That's the staff meeting. This is the time to play a game, watch a favorite TV show, uh, do something that you just really enjoy, but be intentional about the enjoyment of the relationship you have, not about the business of the marriage that you're in. And number three is just daily blessings. Listen, we, we don't spend enough time blessing our spouses. And if you don't know what to do, then it's real easy. Get a jar, get a cup, get a box, write on little slips of paper something your spouse could do for you that would be a blessing and put it in your jar. And then each day or a few times a week, just reach into your spouse's box, pull it out, read what's on there and try to do it. It may be as simple as text them, I love you. It may be as simple as buy them a gift, send them roses, take them out to eat, give them a foot rub, do the laundry for them, do something else they don't like to do. But extending a blessing daily or a few times a week will continue to bring you together in the relationship. That's just three simple ways to be a little more intentional in your relationship. And intentionality in the relationship cements the commitment you have to one another which actually begins to change the chemistry. I told you we were coming back to chemistry. Researchers have actually studied couples who have developed long-lasting, deeper bonds with one another. That's called marriage. And what they've discovered is over the years, a man's testosterone level will drop some, while a woman's testosterone level will come up some, somewhat evening the playing field of their testosterone levels, which as you and I know, that leads to their sex drive. So it's amazing that with a deeply committed relationship, our chemistry levels actually even out a little, and that causes us to have greater similarity in sex drive. And that's why a lot of times when there's research done and couples are interviewed, married couples report higher satisfaction in their sexual relationship than unmarried couples because intentionality is actually the thing that leads to chemistry. So if you're in a relationship right now and you think, oh man, we don't have much chemistry or the butterflies or feelings aren't there, uh, welcome to a real relationship. You didn't marry the wrong person. There's nothing to worry about. All you have to do is start being intentional in the relationship again. And if there's anything in the relationship that's important that's not happening spontaneously, put it on the calendar. I don't care what it is or how weird that sounds. If you're not communicating, put it on the calendar. 30 minutes, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday nights, we're just gonna sit down and talk and reconnect and make sure we're not missing each other like we have been. Uh, if it's acts of affection, if it's date nights, if it's even sex, if it's not happening, put it on the calendar, say it's a priority and I want to meet you in this way and so we're gonna be intentional about it. I can promise you that scheduled sex feels a lot better than no sex. So intentionality is greater than chemistry in the relationship. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, uh, hear how implementing some of these uh, ways to be more intentional in the relationship has impacted your relationship, and just have a discussion about it in the comment section below. And as always, if you think this video might be helpful to somebody you know, consider sharing it with a friend. I look forward to seeing you next time right here on Relationships.